So this slideshow is about recovery between training sessions. Now the recovery time is very important because this is when the body adapts and improves in response to the training session placed upon it. Now if we get this right, we can take advantage of these adaptations and our performance level should improve. This process is called supercompensation or otherwise known as overcompensation. Now if we perform a training session, we would expect that at the end of the training session our body would be in a fatigue state and our performance level would decrease. Now after the training session our body goes into recovery mode and as you can see here we start to improve. Now if we allow the recovery to go long enough we should see that we get an overcompensation or supercompensation and our performance level would improve. But that means that we have to get the training time or recovery time correct. If we do train again too early then as you can see here our performance level may be exactly the same as it was at our previous training session which obviously doesn't take advantage of that previous session. And if I trained even earlier than this, then my performance level would be expected to decrease. So we need to make sure that we are training at the optimal time we are, when we are taking advantage of the overcompensation. Now, if we leave it too long between our training sessions, then we can lose the advantages that we have already obtained. And as you can see here, the adaptations that did occur slowly declined back to the previous performance level and if we left it even longer would go down even further. On the other hand if we're all we're looking to do is to maintain a current level of fitness this would be the optimal time to train again. Now if we do a less fatiguing training session as you can see by the new purple curve all the times differ so they become earlier so we recover a little bit earlier and our training for our optimal time is a little bit earlier as well so you have to make sure that you set recovery times based upon the fatigue taken in by the training session now as you can see here if I do a training session that's actually too hard or overtrained the body goes into more of a state where it recognizes it as an injury rather than looking for a training effect and so at this point what it will look to do is just get back to previous performance levels it won't look to actually get a supercompensation or overcompensation effect now during the recovery process you may experience some muscle soreness now there are two different types of muscle soreness there's the acute muscle soreness which is the muscle soreness you feel straight after the training session but it's normally gone within one to two hours post workout the other form of soreness is known as delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS and this is the muscle soreness we experience 24 to 48 hours after our strenuous exercise. Now DOMS is caused by microscopic tears within the muscle fibers and the surrounding fascia. Now these tears cause an inflammatory response and with the inflammatory response comes swelling and with the swelling comes pain. And that pain is the sensation we're feeling within our DOMS. Now if we're trying to decrease DOMS, there are a number of ways in which we can do it. Most around trying to decrease the amount of swelling that's occurring. So evidence has shown that if we increase our warm-up length, then that will actually decrease DOMS. If we minimize the eccentric loading, which is the lowering of the weight, uh, eccentric loading causes the majority of damage to the muscle. And so therefore by minimizing the time we lower the weight, that can minimize the amount of soreness we feel. And then we can also use different strategies to reduce swelling post-exercise, uh, such as ice, massage, and remaining hydrated. Okay, so when we look at how long it should actually take to recover, we've got a couple of different things here. So the first one being res restoration of muscle glycogen. Now this generally refers more to your cardiovascular type exercise. And as you can see there, recovery time varies between 10 to 48 hours, which is obviously a fairly large difference. So if you're doing a fairly low intensity or low to moderate intensity training session, then we'd expect recovery times to be somewhere between about 10 to 15 hours in terms of the time it takes for the muscle glycogen to be restored. If you're doing a higher intensity training session, then it may be somewhere between 36 to 48 hours. Now this would obviously depend upon a number of different things. Generally the fitter you are, the quicker your muscle glycogen will restore. It will also depend upon your food intake around your training session. Generally the best time to restore your muscle glycogen is immediately post-exercise. As you can see also, after a strength training session, it would generally take about 24 hours for your muscle glycogen to restore.
Now, this is important to make sure that you leave enough recovery time between your training sessions to ensure that the muscle doesn't prematurely fatigue within the next training session. The last thing there you'll see is the recovery from the overly taxing strength training. So generally with our strength training, we're looking for if you're working the whole body about a 48 hour recovery or day on day off. Now, if you are splitting the body up into multiple sections, generally you require more recovery for each muscle part. So if you're splitting the body into two, so say you're working the upper body one day and the lower body the next, we would expect instead of two days recovery that each muscle group would require now three days recovery. So for your upper body, you may train it on the Monday. The next day you'd want to train it would be on the Thursday. 